Hello and welcome to The Quiet Riot where we talk film, television, and media with a emphasis on old movies and nostalgic favorites. I'm Ainsley and in today's video I am sharing with you everything I watched in January. Now I wanted this video to be up a little earlier in the month but unfortunately I have absolutely no sense of time and February just stuck up right on me, so I'm having to schedule myself a little bit better when it comes to getting these specific videos out, especially. I was inspired to do this video after seeing multiple people, especially within the horror community, taking this on very much like when you do your reading wrap-ups and doing just everything that they watched that month. And the first person I remember seeing doing this was Spooky Astronauts, one of my favorite people on this platform. And I decided that I wanted to jump on that bandwagon and do it myself. So I have decided to do this into various categories of I genre and subgenre. So I will be doing action adventure, horror thriller, comedy, mystery, document documentary documentary, animated, and television. Now, I didn't watch a lot of television this time around, and I've kind of been going slowly in the things that I've been watching. I have not been doing a lot of binging, but I still wanted to talk a little bit about what I did watch and have been watching. So let's get started. First off, we're going to talk about the action-adventure films that I watched this year and this year, <laughs> this past month in January. And we're going to start off with Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Now, I saw this film in theaters with a dear friend of mine. It was the first movie that I actually watched in the new year, and I really enjoyed it. It was a really great theater experience. I did get to watch the first film in theater, and I know... Like many Marvel movies, there's a lot of people who love them, but they're also pretty divisive. But I think this one was a really adventurous and fun piece, but it also was very emotional, especially considering that Chadwick Boseman is no longer with us. And so you get to see not only the grief of these characters, but the grief of the people playing them as they work through their grief re-entering this world. I also really liked the villain in this one because he's not necessarily this, he's, he is an antagonist in this world, but you could really see how not only those in Wakanda, but others outside and the, the, I don't want to give too much away if you haven't seen it yet, but the girl that they're trying to find, how that's very, and antagonistic towards them, their antagonists in their world, and I always really like in a film when you can see how, depending on which way you're looking at things, where you, this is the, you know, we're watching this film so they're the protagonists, but if we were seeing it the other way, then it would definitely be the other way, and you can see that. So I definitely liked this movie. Next. I watched Bullet Train. Now, I had never seen this movie before, so this was a first time watch for me, and I really wish I could have saw this in theaters, but unfortunately, I did not go and check it out. But thankfully, when my friend was in, we sat down along with my mother and watched this film on Netflix, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a very fun and adventurous time. There was a lot of great action and energy, and I just really loved everything that pretty much every actor brought to the table. I really want to see Brad Pitt in more roles like this, and Aaron Johnson I want to see in more roles like this as well. It was just a generally very fun and entertaining movie and a great one to watch with friends. So if you haven't watched this movie yet, and you can still enjoy it by yourself, but if you want to get some friends together to watch it, I do highly recommend it. Next on the list, I watched Predator, and this was actually my second time watching it. I watched it the first time, maybe not even a week prior, maybe two weeks prior, but I wanted to give it another watch, as I did watch it while I was at work, so I wasn't necessarily completely zeroed in on it. And I really did like this movie a lot more than I ever thought I would. I never really thought of myself as somebody who likes action, or at least a lot of action. There are certainly some guilty pleasures in there rush hour and I 
decided, you know, why not? I want to try to watch all of the Predator films because I think I have, I have seen a Predator, no, I've seen Predators and I've seen Prey. So I've seen those two before and I really liked Prey and I did like Predators, but I think I, I probably would think a little bit differently if I had seen the entire franchise. So I definitely wanted to go back to the beginning and give that one a watch. Next on this list, I saw one of my favorite movies of all time. This is currently third on my list and that is Jurassic Park. I am currently watching all of the Jurassic Park films and everything involved in the franchise. So I sat down on one weekend and watched the original trilogy with my mother, which means I also watched The Lost World Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park 3. I have to say, I definitely have not seen those two as much or anything else within the franchise, as much as I've seen the first film, and none of those films really really come anywhere close to the original as it's something special but they are still fun and entertaining and they're great to watch with family or just someone in general who loves these films like you do. Next we're moving on to horror thriller films and I'm gonna tell you about The Banquet. Now this is a really odd film that I didn't quite get and I definitely want to give it a rewatch but I have to say that it doesn't make that much sense to me and I'm not somebody who needs a lot of explaining to be done. I don't necessarily need you to tell me everything and I certainly don't want you to spoon feed me I definitely do not need you to spoon feed me every bit of information, but I just feel like there was definitely something missing here and maybe they tried to be a little bit too odd and weird while I maintaining some types of groundedness. I don't know. It was just this very slow burn, so it's certainly not for everybody. I did give it a three stars on Letterboxd. But this is one of those movies again, like I want to see it again to see if maybe I missed something, but it's definitely not one that I recommend for a lot of people. I do know that it's on Shudder and I also found it on Pluto, I believe. Next, I watched The Menu on HBO Max and again, this is just another one I wish I saw in theaters. I'm, I definitely don't go to the theaters as much that I used to a few years ago and a lot of that is just time and money. But I did end up watching the menu with my dad and it was a truly amazing experience. 5 out of 5 stars, 10 out of 10, and A plus all around for this movie. And it's one of those films that I want to watch over and over and just really take it all in. It is a great teacher. It's an incredibly artistic film fully entertaining, great script, great direction, cinematography, acting, everything, and I highly recommend. And I did do a video on that if you would like to go and check it out. I would really appreciate it if you did. And let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Please? <laughs> the next on the list is a rewatch for me, and that is Scream 5. I genuinely love this movie. I did not think when it came out that I was going to like it as much as I did. I did go see it in theaters. I'm super excited for Scream 6. I am a big fan of the Scream franchise, particularly the first film, but I do enjoy the other ones as well. And I'm just excited to see where they're going to take it. Is this going to be the last one? Do they want to make this into a trilogy and end there? I do not know, but I really did like Scream 5 and I'm excited to go see Scream 6 in theaters. The next on the list is The Legend of Hell House. I actually bought this movie and I've been wanting to see it for a really long time. I love the book Hell House by Richard Matheson who wrote the book as well as adapting this and it is quite different as it is a lot more tame though it is very similar to the book as well. It's a fairly faithful adaptation but you can definitely see where they cut things down to fare better on screen because some things aren't just going to be adaptable and this film is also PG which is kind of weird. I wish they maybe would have gone a little bit more balls to the walls with it and made it a full on R but but the PG-13 didn't exist yet because it would not exist until Indiana Jones happened and Gremlins happened. So, who for that? 
I, it's so weird seeing certain things like this and it's a PG rating and so I can definitely see how maybe this isn't for everybody because you want to see it go much farther and especially knowing that it could go a lot farther but I did still enjoy it and it definitely gave me like Roger Corman films featuring Vincent Price vibes though with a bigger budget. Next in this category, I watched Silver Bullet. Now, if you're unsure what Silver Bullet is, it is a Marvel film starring Corey Haim, and it comes from the book by Stephen King. I did like this film. I think it was a bit slow in parts, but I did really like the cast that was chosen because I, you know, I'm familiar with the cast and I think they all worked pretty good within this film and the whole family dynamic of it all and everything that was going on and I, I, I don't know if I actually gave this uh, any specific star rating. I probably would have given it a three and a half. It could have gone a lot farther and I just feel like it, it was missing something. It didn't have as much gumption. The next category is comedy and we're going to start this off with a new film, The Drop, available to stream on Hulu. Now this movie is about a group of friends who get together and one of them ends up dropping the baby and there's consequences to this within the relationships between the couple and the friend group. It might have just been a pure look at millennials in this period of the, our lives where, you know, we're definitely grown-ups and it's just weird. Like, we're all in different places and we're unsure what we want and I'm sure that anybody from, you know, other generations can understand it, but there is that specific of being like, you know, a millennial and, or just being young right now. Uh, I don't know, it's definitely kind of dry, got a bit of dry humor, as well as that kind of, uh, it's not improv, but it feels a little bit like improv, so if that sounds like a something for you, maybe? I haven't given this one a rating yet. Um, I would say I'd probably give it anywhere from three and a half to four stars, depending on my mood while watching. I am currently going through the Pink Panther films and this year and this month I ended up watching the first three. The Pink Panther, A Shot in the Dark, and Inspector Clouseau. Those first two films feature... I started off my little Pink Panther marathon with three films last month and that was the original Pink Panther and its sequel A Shot in the Dark as well as the third film in the series Inspector Clouseau that did not feature Peter Sellers as Clouseau. Now the first two films I absolutely love. I have a special place in my heart for A Shot in the Dark. It is probably my favorite as of now and I'm a lot more I have a lot more nostalgic feelings towards that and I watched Inspector Cruise for the first time and I think it may have been more of a good movie if it was on its own but we already know Peter Sellers as Inspector Clouseau and we were introduced to other characters who were in his life in A Shot in the Dark so I just don't think that Inspector Clouseau really had any chances of being in any way seen as a good movie uh, regardless of what they ended up doing. Next I ended up watching Free Guy. I can't remember where this is available. I know that this is available on streaming and it does start Ryan Reynolds and I always want to just say Villanelle. Anyway, it starts her and it's, I mean it's a fun time. It's not like a super special, but I definitely had a bit of an emotional moment that I wasn't expecting to have in this movie when things were coming to an end, and I don't know, I just think it's a, in many ways it's also this good, like, meditation. I'm just giving it so <laughs> It's not that serious. Um, it, but it's just a good kind of look at, you know, a lot of things, I guess. But it's fun. It's just a fun time, but it's not like this perfect movie. I'd probably give that one three and a half stars as well. 
Next here I got a documentary and I actually only watched one documentary in the month of January and that was the film Adrian. I really wanted to watch that movie for a long time but I never got around to it for whatever reason and I'm finally glad that I took the chance and gave it a watch. What happened to Adrian is really sad and the fact that she did not get to experience her success in full and see her dreams truly be realized or watch her husband or watch her daughter grow up with her husband and just experience the whole life of what it is to be a successful filmmaker that she wanted to be and be a great mother that she wanted to be and so I highly recommend that is a documentary that you can find on HBO Max. Next on the list we are taking a look at the mysteries I watched in January and it was a heavy mystery month let me tell you. I'm a big fan of mysteries. They are some of my favorite films, uh, television series, books, all of the above. And I certainly watched a few of them in January, beginning with After the Thin Man. I am currently doing a series on this channel where I am reviewing all the Thin Man movies. I'm doing a little spoiler free review and then I will be doing a ranking video soon. If you would like to check those out, I would really appreciate it. And so I ended up watching After the Thin Man along with another Thin Man, Shadow of the Thin Man, and The Thin Man Goes Home. And I will have to say, as far as where I'm at now, that they, I don't want to say that they get worse, but they kind of lose a little bit of their caliber as it goes on. Though that is just my opinion in full and I do really highly recommend these movies. The first four is available for you to watch on HBO Max. Next I ended up watching Knives Out again. I ended up purchasing the DVD for myself because I did not have it and I love this movie so much. So much. This is probably one of my favorite films that's been released in the past few years. Five years, ten years, whatsoever. I I love this. I love mysteries. I think it's a really good mystery and Ryan Johnson has really found something that he is incredibly good at and that is writing and directing a hell of a good mystery which Knives Out is and I was really I really enjoyed watching Glass Onion. I've seen it twice by now. I want to watch it again but I ended up watching Knives Out again with my family and it's just a good movie to sit and watch and have fun and I remember after the first time that I had saw it I had watched it several times after that because it just got it was like a comfort movie for me and it, it's certainly a comfort for movie now but it was a special interest there for me for a little while I was watching it over and over and over and over so if you've never watched Knives Out and you're really into mysteries or comedy you like something like Clue or you're into Agatha Christie I highly recommend checking that out along with Glass Onion on Netflix. The final film in this category is The Last of Sheila. This is a movie I've been wanting to watch for a really long time and I finally got around to it when I purchased the DVD myself. Physical media, right? And I decided that it was finally time to do it when I heard that this movie was a great inspiration to Ryan Johnson in doing both Knives Out and Glass Onion and I definitely watching this movie I can see it so I highly recommend if you love Glass Onion and Knives Out either or to check this movie out. It is about a group of friends who are invited to a scavenger hunt and some time on a boat in Greece I believe it is or somewhere nice um <laughs> and uh essentially you know something had happened a year prior and there it it's a it's a weird feeling going on so you can definitely see where ryan johnson got a lot of his inspiration from that last but certainly not least for the month of january is the animated category and Unfortunately, I only ended up watching one animated film for the month, but I definitely want to do more for the month of February. I find animation to be very beautiful. It's an incredible art form and it needs to be respected as film in, in film a lot more than it is, as well as the horror genre does. 
and the what I watched and I watched for the first time was Moana I finally watched it and it was me and my mom and it was just a really good time it's a really fun movie and I I like the the fact that her her end game I like the fact that Moana's end game has nothing to do with a man I just really like that her end game is not about a man which is of course a or has anything to do with the man and it's just nice to see i think we all need the options even as adults to see someone fighting for something that isn't uh, love or the television series that i did watch in january was that 90s show on netflix and i do recommend giving it a try i definitely know that it's been a bit divisive for people but i was a kid in the 90s and i definitely wish i got to experience life as a teenager in the 90s I've also been watching a lot of Columbo. If you don't know what Columbo is, it is a mystery crime show that was made in the 70s and it's got those real cool 70s vibes. So if you want to check that out, it is available on Freebie for free. It's also available to stream on Peacock. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch me as I lose my sanity and share everything I watched in January with you. I would like to know what you watched in January. If you feel like sharing, comment in the, des com the description box. Comment down below or let me know what your favorite and least favorite thing that you watched in the past month. My personal favorite would certainly have to be that I haven't seen Bullet Train and that I have seen before Jurassic Park. I love all of these movies, most of these movies, but those are the ones that I definitely have to say. And my least favorite on the list, I would have to say, is definitely The Banquet, mainly because I completely, I guess I missed the point, or maybe there was no point of it at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Comment below with any recommendations or anything that you would like to see on this channel. And thank you so much for returning or subscribing or just sitting down and watching me ramble on. I really do appreciate it and I thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video and me just being an absolute bejumbled mess then give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more of me subscribe and ring that bell to be notified every single time I post all of that will certainly help me out thank you again and I'll see you next time bye